Microsoft Ignite conference just wrapped up last week and there is a ton of information to parse through. So I've done my best here to capture the main points, hopefully give you some great insights and also share a few great resources to go check out if you want more information. So without further ado, let's jump right in. To Lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world-class Microsoft 365 internet and digital workplace. All right, well, if you notice the background from the title slide, you'll uh, not be surprised that I'm starting with Microsoft Loop, which was one of the early announcements on the first day of Ignite and got a lot of buzz and excitement as a new tool will. So what exactly is Loop? We got a lot of really cool marketing videos, uh, but when we actually break it down, a lot of people had a lot of questions. And one of them I think was, how does this fit in with existing workflows and existing tools like Microsoft Teams? So when we looked at the experiences that were shared, which were obviously preliminary at this stage, we see what is very much a work a canvas is probably the best word for it, that is very flexible and that allows for components to be moved around as needed on that canvas to facilitate collaboration. And what's special about that canvas, I think, is that we can see live collaboration happening in this view very easily. So we can work side by side with people, even if they're miles and miles away from us, which is increasingly common. So this is a really interesting way to see this kind of fluid framework fully realized that we've been waiting for from Microsoft for a while. And it's a much better packaged version of those live components that we had previously seen. So when we look at um, exactly what we're going to get, I think one of the things that's really exciting is our ability to keep different tools in sync. I think one thing that we've seen through working remotely is that some of us tend to spend a lot of our days in one tool and another part of the team may spend a lot of their time in another. A really good example of that is you know, Dynamics 365. And you see here a component being inserted into a Teams conversation that is from Dynamics 365, but the important piece is that it's actually live data. So changes being made in this box here, as crazy as it sounds, is actually in a dynamic live way being persisted into Dynamics 365 itself. So for that salesperson that really doesn't leave that application, they still have the benefit of collaborating with others and not forcing others to come kind of over the fence into their backyard. So here now we're seeing someone on the dynamic side seeing those live changes, getting notifications of those changes, and being able to work side by side. And this really gets to the idea of this digital fabric that Microsoft alluded to during the presentation, which is this idea of a fabric or tissue that's binding work and people together and removing some of those barriers between people being able to work together. So that in concept, in principle, sounds amazing. But let's break it down. What exactly is being delivered here? At least, what are we expecting to see? I think there's three main things that they described. One is a workspace, which is kind of this whole dashboard that we see with this kind of pink outline here that I've added. Within that workspace, we have pages that are these flexible canvases that are dynamic and facilitate that live collaboration. And then we have components and we can drop these fluid or live components onto the page as it suits our needs and work together on this canvas together. So this is really exciting, but if you're looking at this and, and thinking that this looks vaguely familiar, um, you're not alone. There are other tools out there that do this today. One of them is Coda. Uh, and the idea of Coda is that it's a new type of document uh, that's different from all previous types of documents and that it facilitates the use of building blocks. Again, not unlike what we saw with Loop with the idea of these um, building blocks as well and tables that talk to each other as well as views that facilitate everyone seeing the same data but being able to work with that data in different ways. So Coda here is obviously kind of uh, something that some people will look at as inspiration potentially for Loop. And another one of these is Notion which has been around as, uh, as well, which you see similar here on the left hand side we see some workspaces and within those workspaces we can expand those and see what you know, essentially pages with that contain components of information. And this is very kind of wiki-like, but kind of a new evolution or incarnation of that age-old wiki into something a lot more dynamic. 
So this is something to keep in mind uh, for people that are used to using these tools. It might be nice to have something equivalent in the Microsoft 365 space, but I think Microsoft will also have to find ways to differentiate itself as well. Now, if you want a little bit more information that I could provide here, there's a really great video uh, from Microsoft, which I've linked to here, as well as a video from one of my colleagues, Richard Harbridge, on our Tutelage uh, YouTube channel. So definitely check that out if you want uh, some more insights on these topics, because it's something that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be curious about. Now let's look at some of the announcements that were made around Viva because we know Viva has been um, a huge focus for Microsoft over the last year and there's been a lot of evolution uh, in terms of functionality and even vision of how these are going to work. Um, I'm not going to talk about pricing or licensing today. Uh, if you want some information on that, Richard also published a great video on that, so I encourage you to go check that out. But I'll talk about some of the things that caught my eye in terms of innovations. One of them was in the context of insights. If you're like me and you're in a lot of meetings, I think one of the things we're always looking at in terms of continuous improvement is how can we make our meetings more effective? <laughs> and so having a little bit of guidance here through Viva Insights, which is obviously um, watching what we're doing in terms of our trends, how we're spending our time, it has a lot of great data that it can use to kind of showcase things that we could maybe improve in this space. So I loved seeing this panel here around leading more effective meetings, leading more healthy meeting habits, and even at the bottom here seeing some insights in how I actually spend my meeting time. I really also like the ability to create a meeting plan for your team, which is a way to create a kind of consistent best practices type approach that you would share with your team around how best to lead meetings and what are some of the, the things that you're going to do as a pattern that are going to help meetings be more effective and more productive. So I liked seeing that and that's definitely something that I, I would love to play with uh, internally with some of our project teams. Now Viva Learning, the obvious big announcement here is that Viva Learning is now generally available. Uh, there's a lot of included features that are free if you're in the, the right license uh, kind of segments. And so this is great news. Viva Learning is really, really interesting piece of technology. I love seeing this integrated right within the Teams application. And I think where there's really going to be some interesting uh, applications is the integration with third party sources, which we know is going to require some kind of paid add on. And there's a lot more information uh, about that piece online if you're looking for that. But uh, definitely recommend everyone take a look at this now that it's more widely available. Another really interesting announcement was the uh, announcement of a whole new Viva module, uh, Ally.io, which was a recent acquisition by Microsoft. And Ally.io, if you're not familiar with, is a leading OKR company. So what their purpose in this whole um, kind of Viva philosophy is, is to align people's work with team goals and also corporate objectives. So what we're going to be able to do is not only have a standalone Viva module where we're going to be able to see uh, an end-to-end -end solution for goal management and OKRs, we're going to be able to see within that Viva module not only what we're doing as individuals, but what are our teams and departments doing driving towards some of those key objectives. We'll also be able to integrate Ally into existing Viva modules, and there's a couple examples that were shown here. One was integrating that into uh, Viva Daily Briefing, that kind of nice email that we get at the beginning of the day telling us what to, to, to kind of stay on top of. Uh, definitely seeing our objectives in that context is going to be helpful. Also this data uh, we were told is going to surface or bubble up into Power BI, which makes a lot of sense as we can then build really powerful dashboards that are driven by uh, you know, that performance-based or, or goal-based uh, metrics, which is really important. So I'm really excited to see this come, come in. Uh, I'm definitely really happy to welcome Ally.io into the larger Viva family and really excited to see how we can use this going forward. Now, if you want any more resources on Viva, there are a lot that I can point you to. There's a couple great uh, Ignite sessions that are top of my mind when I, when I think back on that. There's also a number of uh, great blog articles, all of which I've tried to include here. If you're looking for the Viva roadmaps, I tried to stitch them all together, but there are a few, uh, a few of these online that you can find. Uh, this is really a good way to see what's kind of available now versus what's coming kind of in the coming months. So definitely take a look at this.